Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for clicking. Thank you so much for listening to Cinematic Ventures podcast. We are back. Gabriel here, and I will be your host for today's episode. And today's episode is a big one, as far as I'm concerned. We're going to be talking about the Saturn Award nominations. So this will be a prediction episode. I will make my own predictions and I'll, I'd be curious to hear what you think in the comments. You can let me know. It is something that I always supported, the Saturn Awards, because these are awards that really appreciate and acknowledge movies that unfortunately don't get the recognition that they probably deserve at other award shows like the Oscars or of course the Golden Globes. So the nominations were announced just a few days ago as I'm recording this uh, on December 9th. Just a few days ago the nominations were announced and there are some pretty interesting movies, interesting titles, interesting names and I will share my own predictions. Now I haven't seen all of the movies or all of the TV shows so I will just be, uh, it'll, it'll be a wild guess on some of the categories. But you can, you can do the same. I will post a link to the website uh, under, under the video. You can check it out. If you're, if you're listening on YouTube, of course, you can check us out on Spotify and Amazon Music. So a little bit about the Saturn Awards. They're probably, there's probably a listener or two who are thinking, I'm not really familiar with those. So these awards have, have kind of grown. They, they really, really kind of have grown in the last two decades. So they were established in 1973, and it was established by the Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films. And in the beginning, it was very focused on honoring science fiction, fantasy, and scary movies. But I would say in the last 30, 40 years at this point, I would say they've been honoring movies in the action genre, comedies, so basically they expanded their reach and that's one of the reasons why this is probably the only award show that I really, really care about. Exactly because they're honoring movies that deserve much more recognition. Yes, you have the usual huge hits and blockbusters, but you will also see a lot of movies that uh, are completely under the radar in general. But thankfully, they get the recognition here. They get the recognition they deserve at these awards. Even if it's just a nomination, it still counts. And thankfully, filmmakers, people who make, obviously, movies behind and front of the camera, they've been embracing the Saturn Awards as well. So it's not just a lame award show that no one cares about. It is a legitimate award with actual merit and... Uh, you can check it out. You can check it out. You can check out their website. You can check out the Wikipedia page. It's a really interesting award show, and I'm glad that it exists. I really am, because in general, as I've mentioned before on the podcast, I'm not a huge fan of award shows in general, uh, reviews, critics, stuff like that. I'm really, I've always supported individualism when it comes to that. I always supported people making their own decisions, people not being influenced by people they don't even know, right? I always supported, you want to watch something? Go and watch it. If you don't like it, good enough. You, you saw it. You did, you did the leap. So I love the Saturn Awards exactly because they kind of show some of the underdogs in a race, a lot of movies that you would probably think at the end of the year, oh, I didn't, I haven't heard of this movie. Or, oh yeah, now I remember that movie, I totally forgot it. Because, unfortunately, not every movie could end up being the next Barbie or Oppenheimer, right? So it's, it's a great way uh, for a lot of movies to get a little bit of uh, limelight, to get a little bit of attention uh, from the people and the media. So... You can check it out, check out the website, you won't regret it. And you can make your own predictions. That's really the interesting part here. So I wanna start first with uh, the actual best movie. Of course, this is all subjective, as we all know. So I will be sharing my own 
views, even though I checked the list and there are a lot of movies that I really like. So it'll be very difficult for me to guess, but I would try to basically uh, say my predictions based not only on my own personal opinion on the movie, but also in the history, right? The pattern looking back. So it'll be an interesting, uh, interesting debate with myself, I guess. <laughs> So let's begin with the first category on the list. As I mentioned, I will post a link to the Saturn Awards website so you can check it out yourself and make your own predictions. That's the fun part. So we start with best science fiction film. The nominees that we have for 2023 at this point. Avatar, The Way of Water, The Creator, Megan, Prey, and Transformers, Rise of the Beasts. Now, uh, I've seen the movies, I've seen those movies, and uh, as a person who appreciates every, every single little detail in a movie, right? A person who doesn't dismiss a movie because I didn't like a scene or something like that, or a character, I enjoyed those movies. Now, looking at it objectively because that's something that it needs to be done when you're doing predictions when it comes to award shows you can have your own opinion that's perfectly fine you could hope for your favorite movie to win but at the end of the day you have to look a little bit at the at the big picture now avatar obviously huge success over two billion the creator came out uh a few months ago uh, i think an underrated movie certainly it's uh, it's a movie that was very I would say very, very much hyped on the ILM Instagram page. ILM were clearly, ILM for those who don't know, Industrial Light and Magic, the CGI visual effects company that we all uh, see pretty much in every big movie. So they were very proud of the creator. So you would see a lot of posts about it before the movie came out. So clearly, clearly they were proud of the movie. I enjoyed it. Same thing for Megan, same thing for Prey and Transformers Rise of the Beasts. I enjoyed all of those movies. But now thinking about it objectively, I would say probably uh, Prey, right? That's not really my final guess, but I I'm just gonna brainstorm here. Prey is, uh, first, I'm very happy for Dan Trachtenberg, the director of Prey. Um, he, is, uh, he is a guy my age. I'm incredibly proud of him because uh, I've known about Dan for a while, way before uh, he was a filmmaker with 10 Cloverfield Lane. Uh, he is, he kind of grew up with the same types of movies that I grew up with. You know, Bad Boys. Uh, he was influenced by Bad Boys, Pulp Fiction, basically a 90s kid. So I'm, I'm super happy for him and I'm happy for uh, for Prey. So Prey actually is, is, is kind of like a big hit among horror fans and just fans of the uh, Predator franchise in general. It's, it's incredibly beloved at this point. You would see online people buying physical media of the movie because the movie was released on streaming uh, originally, but when it got a physical release just a few weeks ago, People went nuts. So you will see all over the internet people being very happy, buying the physical media. So the movie has a huge, huge fan base, Prey. And uh, it's it's um, it's something that I'm very happy about. Uh, Megan, same thing. Very like, uh, uh, it kind of became par part of pop culture for a while, even before the movie was out because of the doll and all of that. But looking at the nominees right now, honestly, Avatar is it's great. I really enjoy Transformers as well, but I have a feeling it would be between the creator and Prey. I actually now because we're here to give uh, to give my prediction. I don't want to just uh, leave it hanging. I would say my prediction for best science fiction film would be Prey in this category. I just think the movie kind of came out of nowhere. A lot of people did not what to did not know what to expect from it, and it surprised a lot of people. So I'm sure the members of the Saturn Awards committee, the voters, would probably feel the same way. So my guess here would definitely be Prey. Yes. Let's continue with the next category. We have Best Fantasy Film, and the nominees are Barbie, Dungeons & Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, Haunted Mansion, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and The Little Mermaid. 
I've seen those movies. I've enjoyed those movies. I I could not believe how much I loved. That's a personal opinion, of course, not my prediction. Uh, but I could not believe how much I loved uh, Dungeons and Dragons. That movie really came out of nowhere for me. Like like it was such an incredible experience. Now, guilty is charged. I'm, uh, I would admit. I've never really been uh, a Dungeons and Dragons uh, guy. Never really played it. Never really played it growing up. It was just not in my household. For us, it was just uh, Rumi Cube and Lego stuff. So that was pretty much it. So I, I really don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, right? Aside from the stuff we know from pop culture. So I watched that movie based on really the cast and and the people behind the camera, and. I absolutely adored it. Probably one of my favorite movies of the year, definitely. So I was very happy, very happy to see it nominated here. And this is a great example of a movie that you're not going to see at the Golden Globes. You're not going to see at the Oscars or the Cannes Film Festival. But you see it at the Saturn Awards because they appreciate it. They appreciate it as a fantasy film. And I know the movie was uh, overall well received by the audience. It was not like a huge international epic blockbuster like billions of dollars no but uh, I, I think it resonated with people and I'm, uh, and I'm glad for that the other nominee in best fantasy uh, category Barbie anything I say it's already been said like the biggest movie of the year uh, you'll hear very different opinions on this movie uh, we've all seen it very polarizing opinion but fact is a fact the movie is a certified blockbuster a huge success and I'm always happy for the success of a movie. Even if it's a movie that is not one of my favorites of the year, I'm happy. I'm rooting for those movies because I think that's and that's what I'm trying to do with Cinematic Ventures as a platform to really just spread more positivity uh, for people to be like, you know what, I don't like this movie, but good for the filmmakers. I'm happy for cinema that we're thriving, that movies are, uh, are being successful again after COVID. So I'm happy for Bar Barbie. I'm, I'm glad to see it nominated here. The next one, The Haunted Mansion, the, 2000, uh, the 2023 version. Now, obviously, we have the 2003 version with Eddie Murphy, that person I really like. But this is another example, just like Dungeons & Dragons. When I started watching Haunted Mansion, I was like, oh, I will watch it. I was kind of uh, skeptical in the beginning, to be honest, because... I am a few, uh, I am a fan of the Eddie Murphy version. I know it's underrated. Some people tend to undermine it, but I really like it. So uh, maybe as a fan of that movie, I was a bit like, uh, oh, I don't know about the new one. But I have to say, I love it. I've seen it three times at this point. The new version of Haunted, Haunted Mansion, and it's such a well-made, nice, fun movie. It, it's like the story, The the uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, but if you haven't seen the new Haunted Mansion, it's on Disney+, Plus. it's available on Blu-ray and DVD, definitely check it out, definitely. If, if you're really in the mood for a fun, like uh, a, a lot of special effects, a lot of visual effects, just a fun, fun movie with a couple of interesting twists and turns, Definitely check it out. Re you really won't regret it. So again, I'm very happy to see that movie nominated for a legitimate award. Because again, you're not going to see it. You're not going to see it at the Oscars. No way. The next stop in a Best Fantasy nomination, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Another movie of this year that I really, really loved. And because I'm a fan of the Indiana Jones movies. I grew up with those movies. Uh, I mean, I didn't grow up in the 80s. I grew up in the in the late 90s. But Indiana Jones was and still is like uh, the epitome for me of a great adventure movie. Uh, when I say Indiana Jones, I mean all of them. And yes, including Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I know what's on what people are probably thinking. People can be very cynical about it. I enjoyed it and. It was the same thing for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Now, I, I know I know what some people said. It was uh, the controversy about the aging and all of that, the ending of the movie. People said, oh, we got too fantastical. I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't seen it. But if you think about it, Indiana Jones was always a fantasy. Yes, we kind of, because fantasy is not like overwhelming fantasy, like the Haunted Mansion, for example, but it is a fantasy franchise. 
when you look at the big uh, when you look at the big picture. You see the first movie, you have melting faces, you have ghosts killing Nazis, you have the the guy uh, drinking out of the uh, uh, out of the glass and and just uh, completely disintegrating in front of the camera. You have a knight who's been alive for like thousands of years. So this is fantasy, and people live under the impression that these are like oh just an adventure movie. No, it's a fantasy movie, and as a fantasy movie. I think Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny really, uh, really knocked it out of the park. I enjoy the movie. I knew from day one that James Mangold will do a great job. When when he was announced as a as a as a director, yes, some people were like skeptical, like, oh, it's not Spielberg, it's not the same. Well, as far as I'm concerned, he created a great movie, a great uh, a great ending uh, to the uh, franchise, or is it? I guess we'll see. So I enjoyed it, and again, I'm happy to see it here because uh, unless we're talking about visual effects or editing or stuff like that, you're not going to see that movie at the Oscars or the the Golden Globe. So happy to be happy to see that movie here. And the last one in the best fantasy film section, The Little Mermaid. Obviously, unfortunately, a movie that was shrouded with uh, like completely. I guess overshadowed by criticism, racial criticism, just we know everything. If you're a film fan, you follow uh, pop culture, you follow uh, online media about movies, you know all of the uh, all of the negative stuff that people said even before the movie came out, simply because of the casting of a black actress. Personally, I really enjoy the movie. I think um, uh, Haley, the actress, she did a great job. She has a great voice. I, I really, really enjoyed the movie, uh, more so than I expected, because it's just uh, not because I have something against it, like preconceived notions, not at all. It's just not my, um, I'm an action guy. I grew up as an action guy, even though I love all types of movies, but uh, this was not really on my radar uh, uh, eventually, uh, initially, but I got a time to watch it on Disney Plus, and I really enjoyed it. Really nicely done movie. The 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 visuals were beautiful. I think the movie works. Now, out of those movies, Barbie, Dungeons and Dragons, Haunted Mansion, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, The Little Mermaid, Best Fantasy Film nomination at the Saturn Awards. What do I think? Who's gonna be the winner? Well, this is a tough one. Haunted Mansion, it's fun. Barbie, it's uh, it's also fun. All of the movies are fun. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm proud to see all of these movies here. But on this one, I think it might be really between uh, Barbie and probably Dungeons and Dragons. But on this one, I think, because Barbie was such a, is, it continues to be, I guess, such a cultural phenomenon. And it is a fantasy movie, like a, really, I guess, high-profile fantasy movie. I think, as much as I like, uh, I like Dungeons & Dragons more than Barbie, to be honest. I really want Dungeons & Dragons to win, but I have a feeling, again, just being objective, not just sharing my opinion, just being objective about it, I have a feeling that Barbie is going to win here. So, my prediction for best fantasy film, it would be Barbie. Guess we'll see. Uh, I'd be happy to be wrong if it's Dungeons & Dragons or any of the other movies, honestly. I just love them all. But on this one, I would go with Barbie. Best fantasy film. Moving on, the next one, a big one. If you love scary movies, here we go. Best horror film nomination. We have Barbarian, which I still haven't seen, I admit. Evil Dead Rise, Insidious the Red Door, Rainfield, Scream 6, Smile and Talk to Me. So these are good choices, as far as I'm concerned. These are good choices. I've seen most of those movies. Smile is one of my favorites uh, in the last few years in terms of horror movies. I think they did an incredible job, especially when you consider this is a first-time director. The movie looked great, and it worked for me. Scream 6, I absolutely love that as well. I've always been a Scream fan. Now, obviously, I don't like the controversy that's happening now with the actresses leaving the franchise, but... It is what it is. Uh, I still support the franchise. Renfield. Renfield was a very, very much a pleasant surprise. Now, I wanted to see the movie from day one because obviously I'm a huge fan of Nick Cage and the DP, the cinematographer uh, of uh, Renfield is Mitch Amundsen. And he is a person that I've always supported. I've always admired and one of the best uh, cinematographers, specifically best action cinematographers. He shot Transformers, 
He shot so many amazing action movies. Wanted, G.I. Joe, all of that. So I'm happy to see Renfield here being nominated. Definitely happy. Insidious, The Red Door. Patrick Wilson directs the movie. He's back. So it was a big deal. The movie was a success. I enjoyed it. So again, happy to see it here. Evil Dead Rise. Huge, huge hype around that movie. And uh, I think if you ask most Evil Dead fans, I think they would say that it did not disappoint. So again, good choices here. So best horror film, very difficult, very difficult to make a prediction. Again, we have The Barbarian, Evil Dead Rise, Insidious, The Red Door, Renfield, Scream 6, Smile, and Talk To Me. Now, Talk To Me got really hyped in the last few weeks. Like, you would hear a lot about it. Uh, about that movie. I think it was a, it was a big surprise. And I think this might be the key to its success at these awards here, the Saturn Awards. So as much as I like Smile, Smile came out like, uh, I think at the end of 2022, but they still include it here. So I guess, uh, I guess that's their calculation. Honestly, out of those that we have here, I think it would be between Evil, Dead Rise, and Talk To Me. But knowing how Talk To Me kind of came out of nowhere, and uh, yes, you hear conflicting opinions about it. I've heard people who are not so happy with it, people who are happy with it. I mean, like any other movie, right? But on this one, just based on being objective and looking at how people react and the history of the Saturn Awards because they really like to, and I, I always supported that, they always like to support really uh, underrated gems or movies that kind of blew up out of nowhere. So I have a feeling, I have a feeling that on this one, honestly, I would go with Talk To Me. That would be my choice. Now, is it my favorite out of the out of the group of those movies? No, not really. Uh, I would prefer Smile uh, or even Evil Dead Rise, but I just have that feeling, that weird feeling that this might be the winner in the best horror film section category. So this is it. This is my prediction for best horror film. Continuing with the next one, which is another one that I'm sure people are excited about. Best superhero film. We have Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantumania, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Blue Beetle, The Flash, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Now, we know all of the uh, all of the ink that people wasted writing and, and just talking about the quote-unquote fail of Marvel in the last few years. Yes, we know about the underperformance of Ant-Man and the, Wa the Wasp. Same thing with Blue Beetle, The Flash. Obviously, a lot of controversies there. A lot of different opinions. Black Panther, uh, again, I saw all of those movies. Uh, I have my own opinions. I don't hate. Uh, if if uh, you, the viewer, are wondering, do I hate all, one of those movies? Do I have strong feelings? No, I don't hate movies. And... There might be a movie that's not really my cup of tea, right? But I would never say I hate a movie. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people use that word, and I think it's too strong of a word to describe a piece of art. But again, that's for another episode. Let's stay focused on the nominations. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Black Panther, Blue Beetle, The Flash, or Guardians of the Galaxy. Honestly, knowing the reaction of the fandom and uh it doesn't mean that uh that saturn awards are following the like sheep they're just following the online narrative i don't think so but i have a feeling that in this category the winner will be guardians of the galaxy volume three i really believe that because there were a lot of uh emotions uh, connected to that movie right I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, people seem to react really positively to Guardians of the Galaxy. And it was probably the only one, the only flat-out huge success of this year when it comes to uh, Marvel comic book movies. So my guess here, my prediction would be Guardians of the Galaxy, best superhero film. Next up, we have a category that's really uh, something that I always like because I am an action guy. We have Best Action Adventure Film. The nominees are Bullet Train, The Equalizer 3, Fast X, or Fast 10, John Wick, Chapter 4, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1, and The Woman King. Now, this one... I think it's pretty easy if you just look at the uh, the nominees. Most people probably say John Wick, right? 
uh, or Mission Impossible, even, Debt Reckoning. Now, I enjoy those movies, all of them. I saw them. I'm an action guy. I saw some of them multiple times. I really don't want to spend, because the podcast will be like five hours long, and I don't want to waste your time for that long. But uh, I saw most of those movies multiple times. Uh, I enjoy them. The Equalizer 3, I think it was a great fitting end uh, to the trilogy. But I don't think The Equalizer will win, because the movie was, uh, it was very... Surprisingly quiet, restrained. There were like bursts of violence and action, but overall the movie was much more like um, just the the little adventure, the communication, the uh, the the character interactions uh, in this uh, Italian city, right? So I don't think Equalizer Three would win Best Action Film. I honestly think, judging by the reactions, judging by the um, just the objective view, right? I think the winner in the best action adventure film category will be John Wick, Chapter 4. That's my prediction. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Maybe Mission Impossible will will beat it eventually. I don't know, but that will be my guess. John Wick, Chapter 4. Next up, we have Best Thriller Film. The nominations, or the nominees in this case, are Don't Worry Darling, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, The Lesson, The Menu, Knock at the Cabin, and Oppenheimer. Now, interesting. I love thrillers. I've seen all of those movies. Uh, and, and I'm glad to see Glass Onion, right? I, I'm really glad to see it uh, in, uh, in an award show. And I'm very happy to see The Menu, Knock at the Cabin. I really enjoy Knock at the Cabin. I'm a huge M. Night fan. And obviously, we have Oppenheimer. Now, the easiest, I think the 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 first guess or the easiest guess would be, oh, it'll be Oppenheimer, like it's the biggest movie of the year, such a huge hit. But I, I have a feeling that this might be a surprise. Maybe the menu, even Knock at the Cabin or Glass Onion, it, it's a really difficult category to predict. But Honestly, considering uh, my own opinion, objectively looking back at the at the other uh, Saturn Awards, they tend to sometimes really surprise people. So you might think it might be Oppenheimer because it's such a cultural phenomenon. But on this one, honestly, I would go with, because that was a surprise, I think, for a lot of people, I would go with the menu. Uh, I, I would probably be wrong, but I just have that gut feeling that it's not going to be Oppenheimer or Knock at the Cabin. I think it will be the menu. I guess we'll see. Time will tell. Maybe I'll be 100% wrong. I'm happy to be wrong, right? Any of those movies, any of them wins, I'd be happy. I'd be a happy camper. Next up, we have Best Actor in a Film. We start with the performances. So now it was, until now, it was only movies, but now we start with actual performers. So Best act, best Actor in a Film, we have Ralph, uh, Ralph Fiennes for The Menu, Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, obviously, Ben Kingsley, Jules, Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer, Chris Pratt, Guardians, of course, Keanu Reeves, and Sam Worthington, respectively for John Wick and Avatar, The Way of Water. Now, this one is another that's interesting. I'm glad to see Ben Kingsley here, Killian Murphy, of course, Keanu Reeves. I have a feeling, uh, as much as I like Avatar, I don't think Sam would be the winner in this category. So, honestly, I think it might be between Killian Murphy, Chris Pratt, and Keanu Reeves. Now, I would love to see Harrison Ford receiving the award for Indiana Jones and uh, Dial of Destiny. I would really love to see it because you can see it in interviews. You can see it in just in his overall behavior when it comes to the Indiana Jones movies. He really cares about this character. He may not, he may be a bit snarky and, 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 and uh, like um, critical of Han Solo and maybe he doesn't love that character as much he love as he loves Indiana Jones, but... It was a very touching performance, and considering, like, yes, he is much older uh, in that movie, I think he did a great job, especially in the last 20 minutes of the movie, and this will be a very, like, a crowning achievement at the end, because this is definitely the last Indiana Jones movie for Harrison, so this will be a great, great way to really appreciate that, of giving him the award for Best Actor. 
But this is my opinion as a fan, as someone who have been appreciating this franchise and appreciates the fact that Harrison came back after all, all of these years. Um, I don't think it'll happen, honestly. I think they try, they try to stay objective as possible. The Saturn Awards, that's one of the reasons why I like them. So I don't think he's going to win in this category. But honestly, I think on this one, and not because it's, it's a huge hit, but I have a feeling that... Killian Murphy is going to win this one. Now, obviously, this is not going to be the first or last award for him. Clearly, he's going to be nominated for Best Actor at the Oscars, Golden Globes. He's going to be showered with uh, with awards, no doubt. But I also have a feeling that he's going to get this one. So I could be 100% wrong. It could be Keanu or Chris Pratt, and they both did amazing and John Wick and, Kill and, uh, and Guardians. But I have a feeling it would be Killian. So that would be my guess. Best actor, Killian Murphy. Continuing, best actress in a film. We have Viola Davis, The Woman King, Mia Goth, Pearl, Anya Taylor John, The Menu, Ember, Mid Thunder, Prey, Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie, Barbie, Zoe Saldana, Avatar 2. Now, this one, I think it would be, honestly, it would be a fight between Mia Goth and Ember, Mid Thunder of Prey. Uh, that's what I think. Prey and Pearl, uh, both P movies, <laughs> were like these huge surprises for a lot of people. Pearl is like very, very popular in the horror community. And let's not forget the Saturn Awards, they started as uh, as awards appreciating horror and fantasy. So uh, this will be a very, very interesting category to watch. But... Honestly, knowing how much praise and how many, how much, how many people talk about it, about Mia Goth and her performance in Pearl. Again, I'm not saying that we are just following the herd. I'm really just trying to be objective with the overall reception is. Uh, sometimes it could be mixed. It doesn't mean it's not going to win. Absolutely. But on this one, I would say for best actress in the film, I would go. My prediction would be Mia Goth for Pearl. That would be my prediction. So, continuing. Long list, right? Best Supporting Actor in a Film. We have Nick Cage for Renfield. We have Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Ryan Gosling, Barbie, Michael Keaton, Flash, Stephen Lang, Avatar 2, and Mats Mikkelsen. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Now, I like all of those actors, but I think at the end of the day, it would be, honestly, between two people. Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer and Ryan Gosling for Barbie. It's a tough one to call because both of those performances, people were kind of surprised in a way, right? Like, oh, Downey is like under heavy makeup, like something completely different from the persona that we all know from the Marvel movies. Ryan Gosling, uh, same thing. People were pl pleasantly surprised by his performance in Barbie. Now, this one is, uh, it's a difficult one, but honestly, I would go, my prediction would be Ryan Gosling for Barbie. Now, would he get a nomination for, for an Oscar for Barbie? I really don't know. Uh, but for the Saturn Awards, I would say it would be Ryan Gosling for Barbie. That would be my prediction. Okay, continuing. Best Supporting Actress in a Film. Angela Bassett. We have Black Panther, right? A little bit late, actually. Uh, the movie came out like in 2022, right? We have next stop, Emily Blunt, Oppenheimer, Jane Curtin, Jules, Melissa McCarthy, The Little Mermaid, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Indiana Jones, and Sophie Wilde. Talk to me. So... Phoebe Walter Bridge, I really liked her in the Indiana Jones. People were concerned. Oh, is this going to be like uh, the woke treatment? She's going to become the female Indiana Jones. Clearly, it did not happen. I think she gave a great performance. Melissa McCarthy, same thing. Jane Curtin in Jules. Emily Blunt, yes. Angela Bassett. But on this one, I think the winner in this category, supporting actress, would be Sophie Wilde for Talk to Me. Again, Talk to Me, it's been like a huge sensation among the horror fans. Like it came out, it came out of nowhere in a way. So I think this hype will definitely ha help Sophie Wilde. Yeah. So interesting, interesting category so far. Let's continue with the next one. Best younger actor in a film. 
Interesting, right? But yeah, it's a real category and I'm glad that they're doing it. We have Halle Bailey for The Little Mermaid. We have Vivian Blair for The Boogeyman. Jack Champion for Avatar. Zolo Marduena for Blue Beetle. Apologies if I did not pronounce it correctly. Violet McGraw for Megan. Noah Schnapp. Is it Schnapp? I think so. Apologies if it's uh, mispronounced. For the Tudor. Best Younger Actor in a Film. Honestly, uh, I don't know if this will be like a reaction to the uh, negativity, negativity that came out like for that movie and specifically for the abuse that she got, uh, Halle Bailey, for The Little Mermaid. But looking at the other nominees, and I respect and admire all of them, but I have a feeling, I think she, she did a very good job in The Little Mermaid. Honestly, I think she's going to win. Uh, this is one of those categories that... Uh, it's kind of an easy, uh, easy choice for me, easy prediction. I could be wrong. Like uh, everything that I mentioned so far, I could be 100% wrong. And uh, I'd be happy to admit that I was uh, full of buh. <laughs> but on this one, I have a feeling that I, I'm, I'm going to be right. It's uh, Halle Bailey. That would be my prediction for best younger actor in a film. Next up, a big one, best film direction. We have... Jim Cameron, Avatar, Greta Gerwig, Barbie, James Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy, James Mangle, Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny, Mark Mylod for The Menu, Chris Nolan for Oppenheimer, and Danny Filippiu and Michael Filippiu for Talk to Me, Philippore, I think. Now, this is interesting. The big ones, Cameron, Gunn, Mangold, Nolan, I don't think they will win. Not because they're just so big. I think keeping up with the history of the Saturn Awards, they really, as I've mentioned many times now, they uh, they would very often support the underdog in this race. And we see quite a few of them. We see the directors of Talk To Me. We have Mark Mylod for The Menu and Greta Gerwig for Barbie. Now, Greta Gerwig, she gets obviously a lot of press, a lot of hype, um, a lot of positive hype for her work on, on Barbie. So honestly... My prediction, my opinion, it would be between Mark Milo for The Menu and Danny and Michael Philippore for Talk To Me. But I have to give a prediction, right? There's no like uh, just choosing two. It has to be one. So I would go best film direction. Probably I would go with Danny and Michael Philippore for Talk To Me. Uh, I know, I know some people might disagree. I know the feeling I, I think Talk To Me was exactly because it, it became so popular all of a sudden. There are people who are not very happy about it, right? Uh, so I've read different reactions as it is with every other movie in existence. But I just have that feeling that uh, the Saturn Awards will encourage uh, the younger filmmakers and will reward them for the effort. Again, I always say this. It's a very important part of this platform. You may dislike something, right? Not your cup of tea, but you have to be able to appreciate the efforts, right? So if you don't like a movie uh, and uh, it's it's completely out of your uh, wheelhouse, you can say, you know what? I didn't like it, but I appreciate the efforts. They put some efforts in this and they have my respect. I would be excited for what they do next, right? Again, a little bit of positivity. It never hurts. So this is Best Film Direction. Next one, Best Film Writing, another important one. We have Avatar, Jim Cameron, Rick Jaffa, and Amanda Silver. We have Barbie, Noah Baumbach, and Greta Gerwig. We have The Menu, Seth Rees, and Will Tracy. We have Mission Impossible, Debt Reckoning Part 1, Eric Jenderson, and Chris McQuarrie, Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan, and Pearl, Ty West, and, yes, Mia Goth. She was actually involved in the writing. Uh, maybe some people were not aware of that. So, again, this is the Saturn Awards. Very often they would they would uh, award the underdog. So this one is interesting. Uh, honestly, I think uh, I've been saying honestly a lot, right, guys? Apologies for that. There are a lot of repetition happening on this podcast. Again, this is off the cuff. No, no script. I'm just looking at the list, literally. On the screen right now and just giving you giving you my predictions no filter no editing nothing so yeah it's it's pure pure podcasting so uh, this is an interesting one uh, but 
Again, I think it's it's it'll be between The Menu and Pearl. So, best film writing, I would go with keeping up with, I guess, the horror genre, I guess, uh, explosion of the last few years. I think honestly, I'm I'm a little bit a little bit divided here. I want to go with Pearl because of how popular and how uh, how popular it is among horror community. But also you have Oppenheimer, which is a very complicated movie, a lot of storylines, just from a film from from a writing point of view standpoint, it's it's an incredible uh, achievement. But you also have Barbie, which is how do you make a movie? out of Barbie, right? A movie like it's coherent, it's it has something to say, so that's a great accomplishment as well. So this one is very, very difficult. Um, but I would go just, I would go crazy on this one, and I would say Pearl. I just think Pearl would be the winner. It could be Barbie or Oppenheimer, but I would go with Pearl. Again, I would try to support the underdog in this case, even though it's quite popular, but still not as big as Barbie and Oppenheimer. So yes, Ty West and Mia Goth, I think, for film writing. Next one, best design. Now this is interesting. Best producer, production design. Now you, you're gonna see it here, probably you're gonna be confused. Best film producer designer. Now this is production design in this case, the actual sets as we know. We have Avatar, The Way of Water, we have Barbie, we have Guardians of the Galaxy, John Wick, Oppenheimer, and Renfield. Now, it's easy to dismiss Avatar because you would say, what production design? A movie is like 100% CGI, right? But the fact that it's nominated tells you that there's much more than you think. There's a lot of live action photography in the movie. So it definitely counts. And it's a it's a gorgeous looking movie. But Honestly, on this one, again, honestly, Jesus Christ, this is my like a parasite word for me. <laughs> on this one, I would go with uh, Barbie. The production design of that movie, it's 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 really great. So obviously, you have Barbie, you have to create, you have the real world, so you have a lot of uh, a lot of things to do on uh, on your hands. So I think they did a great job. The nominee here is Sarah Greenwood, and I think that would be the winner, Barbie, for production design. Next one, best editing, best film editing. We have Avatar, we have Fast X, Fast 10, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, John Wick Chapter 4, Mission Impossible, and Oppenheimer. I would go on this one with uh, John Wick. I just have that feeling, right? Call it a gut feeling. All of those movies are absolutely amazing when it comes to editing. I appreciate all of them, but I just have that weird feeling. I can't really explain it. So I would go with John Wick for best film editing. Best music in a film. As a huge film score lover, this is a great category for me. We have Avatar, The Way of Water, Simon Franklin, who uh, who replaced, unfortunately, James Horner. Uh, not unfortunately that he replaced him, but unfortunately because James Horner passed away. So I, I think he did a very good job. He's been working with Horner for a while. He worked on the original Avatar. And I think considering the enormous task of scoring a behemoth of a movie like Avatar 2, I think he did a very good job. You have Barbie, Mark Ronson, Andrew Wyatt, Indiana Jones. Obviously, we have John Williams, The Little Mermaid, Alan Menken, the legendary Alan Menken, Renfield, Beltrami, another Marco Beltrami, another great score, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Daniel Pemberton. All of those are great, great uh, artists and great, great results. But I need to make a prediction, so it needs to be only one. Um, I don't think it would be Marco Beltrami as much as I like the Renfield score, um, it would be, I believe, Barbie. I would go with Barbie on this one. Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt, best music in a film. Uh, I don't remember much from Pemberton's work on Across the Spider-Verse, but this could be a surprise. I could be wrong. This could be Spider-Man, so I guess we'll see. But I would go with Barbie on this one. Best costume, best film costumes. Avatar, Way of Water, Barbie, Black Panther, Guardians, Indiana Jones, and Oppenheimer. Black Panther would definitely qualify some great costumes. Barbie, obviously, Guardians of the Galaxy. But this one is another one that I think Barbie will score. 
Not because, again, not because I'm a Barbie fanboy. <laughs> I enjoy the movie, but I'm not like one of those big, big, huge fans. I'm just thinking, I'm trusting my guts and just trying to be as objective as possible with those choices. So, best film costumes, I would go with Barbie. Best makeup, we have The Covenant. We have Evil Dead Rise, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Oppenheimer, Prey, and Rainfield. Interesting choices. Evil Dead Rise obviously would be an obvious choice. Um, the makeup effects, like the, the 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 insanity, it's an Evil Dead movie, so you know things go crazy, gory, bloody, cuts, wounds, whatever. So great, great achievement here. But we also have Prey, and uh, I have a feeling again, thinking objectively, just thinking how Prey was uh, received, mostly by the audience. I would go with Prey, and we have obviously the legends uh, here, Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff for best makeup. So my prediction here is Prey. Next one, and that is the big one. Well, not the biggest one, but certainly an important one. Best visual effects, best special effects. Ah. Very, very interesting. And this will be the last category that I will cover. Now, there are a few more categories left, mostly for television series and stuff like that. But I really wanted to focus now on the movie section. Probably I will make another episode, another another podcast episode for the TV section of the nominations. But this one is strictly for movies. So, best... Film, visual, special effects, as I'm quoting the actual nominations here. We have Avatar, obviously. We have The Creator, Guardians of the Galaxy, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, and Oppenheimer. Now, I'm glad Oppenheimer uh, is here because uh, you need to appreciate the effects that you don't see. And the truth is, there, there are quite a few visual effects in that movie. A lot of people think because Nolan supports, like, physical, real, on location, which I always appreciate. But there's still a lot of effects in that movie. So, hence, that's why we have it here. So, this one is, uh, it's, um, it's a difficult one. But, knowing how much ILM, Industrial Light Magic, how much they cared, how much they invested uh, of themselves in the creator, the making of the creator, and seeing the movie and how seamless the CGI, the effects were. On this one, as much as I love all of the other movies, I would go with the creator. I think the creator will be a surprise. Yes, it did not explode. It's not a huge international hit like Oppenheimer or Avatar 2, but it's a movie with really stellar, like really, really good CGI. It really works well. And I'd be happy to see that movie being nominated. And it is, as we see, nominated, and I'm happy to see it as the winner. So that would be my prediction. Best film, visual, special effects, the creator. We have a couple of more sections here. Now, uh, I, I, I'll be honest, best international film, I haven't seen. I only saw The Missing and The Origin of Evil. For best international film category, we have Madeline Collins, Missing, The Origin of Evil, Ransom, Speak No Evil, and Sisu. Now, I haven't seen Sisu. I know there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of hype around that movie. So, I haven't seen it, so it, it would be a difficult guess, but just judging by Again, it came out of nowhere. Judging because of that and the uh, the support that the Saturn Awards have always been giving to movies like, like Sisu, I would go with Sisu on this one for Best International Film. But any of those movies, I'm sure they're great. I really enjoyed Missing and The Origin of Evil. But I just have a feeling that Sisu would be the winner. Next one, Best Independent Film. We have Aporia, Brooklyn 4-5, Fall, Jules, Pearl, and uh, Tourer. Now, this is interesting. I haven't seen a Pori in Brooklyn 4-5. I've seen the others. Jules and Pearl, I think that's the biggest competition here, those two movies. It's It'll be one of those two, in my opinion. Jules, uh, it got quite a few nominations here, so it's, it's absolutely possible that it would win. 
Uh, Pearl, we talked a lot, a lot about it. So honestly, I would go with Jules on this one, ladies and gentlemen. I just have that feeling. Again, a gut feeling. I think Jules will win Best Independent Film. Again, I, I, I would be happy. I would be happy to be wrong. All of those movies deserve recognition. And we are reaching the final one before the TV categories. Again, as I mentioned, I will be mentioning those categories probably in a future episode. We'll see. But uh, you can check it out yourselves. I just wanted to be focused today, as I mentioned, only on the cinematic part of it. There are a lot of great television series, so I'm sure you will have an interesting read. Now, the last one in the movie section, best animated film. We have Elemental, we have Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, the sequel, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Super Mario Brothers movie, Suzume, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Number one, I'm happy to see Suzume here. It's a huge hit in Asia. I was happy enough. Uh, I was, uh, I guess, lucky enough to see it myself as well. I really enjoyed it, and I'm super happy to see it here. Again, this is a this is a movie that you're not going to see in any other in the English speaking world, in any other, um, I guess, award show. Now, I would still, I still have hope that Suzume can make it for the Oscars, maybe for uh, and best best animated picture. I really hope so, but. Focusing on the Saturn Awards, Elemental, Puss in Boots, Spider-Man, Super Mario, Suzume, Teenage, Ninja Turtles. All of them interesting choices, all of them. Super Mario Brothers, huge hit, huge hit, I'm, I'm happy for that movie. I honest, I don't think it'll be Elemental. Elemental, uh, I really, really loved it. Very original, beautiful movie. I just have a feeling that it would be Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. A popular movie, for sure, beloved movie by its uh, target audience, but still a movie you're not going to see uh, receiving a lot of like uh, mainstream award recognition, so I'm glad to see it here. But again, the Super Mario Brothers movie, very popular, people love it too, so this one is very, very difficult, very difficult, but I still have to choose one, that's why uh, we're making this episode, I don't want to let you down and just, um, just talk about it without making my own prediction i think out of those and i would like to say suzume just to support the underdog a movie that it's not really an english uh, speaking movie but on this one i would go with the super mario brothers I i'm pretty sure it's like 50 50 with spider-man I could have easily said Spider-Man as well, but uh, on this one, when you're 50-50 on something, you just have to go with your gut. So I would go with the Super Mario Bros. movie. Uh, if, if it wins, absolutely well-deserved. Absolutely. If it doesn't win, it's Spider-Man. Again, well-deserved. Any of those movies, honestly, any of those movies uh, deserves to win. Suzume, I'm very happy, like super surprised to see it. So uh, I will be rooting for all of them. But... That's it. Those are the predictions. Apologies again for all of the blabbing and all of that. Apologies for repeating honestly so many times, but I really want to be honest with myself and with you, dear listeners. So thank you for listening. Hopefully it was an interesting, uh, uh, interesting episode for you. It was certainly an interesting one for me. I could have spent hours more discussing each one of those movies. They deserve uh, recognition and I'm glad that they're receiving uh, receiving the recognition, even if it's just nomination, for the Saturn Awards. I'm glad, and again, just as a reminder, the Saturn Awards, the winners will be announced on February 4th, 2024. Uh, it'll be live. I think uh, you just have to go to their website. I will probably post a reminder because I'm a huge supporter of the Saturn Awards, and uh, I want more and more people to support them because they deserve they are honoring movies that that you dear listener love but maybe don't get the recognition they deserve as you saw from all of those nominations we have the the expected choices the big hits but we also have plenty of movies that would never see any kind uh, of award in general but here they are so thank you for listening 
Uh, I hope you, you get to see all of the movies that we mentioned today. All of the movies are great. I hope you get to see them. I hope you enjoy all of them. I hope uh, you make your own predictions for the awards. It's fun, right? It's interesting. And we will be back with the next episode. And I'm thinking of making something very, very special because Christmas is coming. Best time of the year. So you'll see. You will see for the next episode. Thank you again for listening. Head over to the Saturn Award website. Check out the nominations yourselves. Make your own predictions. And let me know. Let me know on the email. Let me know in the comment section. There's always a way to communicate. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Gabriel here signing off. We will be back in the next episode. Stay safe. Stay healthy.